if you could get up to a thousand bucks in as little as 48 hours, you can with Tax Slayer. Instant refund now. E file your taxes. Get up to a granny in as little as 48 hours. No upfront fees. Taxslayer.com for details. Greg Olson, great dude. Known him forever on the show today. Keenan Allen, who I've never met, but I watched a ton of Chargers football this year. He'll be joining us too. Eddie House, Michael Vick, Doug Gottlieb. Um, you know, I, I say this, and I almost say it as a cautionary tale for people in my business. Be very careful about getting gassed up on the Internet. The Internet will tell you things like, man, mix politics with your sports. No, I haven't done that for two years. Numbers are up 49% year to year. Place I used to work at, they do that. They're canceling shows, reorganizing them. Here at Fox, I talk sports because I know what king is. It's football, and I talk it all the time. More people watch the Pro Bowl than any NBA game this year. Celts Warriors, hell of a game. I watched it two and a half times as many people in America. You watch the Pro Bowl, a game that doesn't count and is basically flag football in pads. On the Internet, soccer, basketball, mix sports and politics is king. But at bars and lounges and restaurants and in middle America, the NFL, you keep your politics to yourself is king. Proud to announce today that Fox and the NFL has always been number one here, has extended its agreement five years. We now have Thursday night football. This will also enhance significantly our digital rights, 11 games a year. Nine of television's 10 most watched programs last year were NFL games. Thursday night football was the number two show in primetime. Not sports, all television shows in America. Remember that documentary, Super Size Me? It's going to end fast food and Big Big Macs. Yesterday, McDonald's reported highest sales in six years. The NFL's not perfect. It's got its issues like everybody else. It will be king for the rest of my life. And I've never been happier to be associated with the league and Fox Sports. Tip of the cap to my bosses. It has been a long, long process. Thursday night football for the next five years and an expanded NFL package officially here at Fox. Awesome, awesome news. Christine now with our news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. Tom Brady had his 12 stitches in his hand removed earlier in the week, and now here he is giving us an update on oh. his progress. Oh, okay. Of my hand, it's getting better. I mean, it's not quite where I want to be. Um, so I'm just trying to protect it the best way I can. Um, it's obviously a very important uh, part of my body for a quarterback. So I just want it to be as healthy as possible for uh, for the game on Sunday. So uh, it's Under Armour just made it for me. It's a, it's a great glove. It's got a lot of recovery in it, and that's what I need this time. <laughs> nice commercial there, Tom, for Under Armour. It's also interesting to note that his recovery pajamas are also made by Under Armour. You know, it, it is pretty interesting, though, Christine. So he heard, he gashed it, according to the stories that came out, when he ripped his hand up, it gushed blood. Now, that's, yeah. what, that's what they were I didn't. You know, I've never seen it, the gush blood. Uh -huh. That was like a Wednesday. Like, he played on that Sunday and played really well. Crazy. That you look back and you're like, you know, wow. Like, now it should be okay, but I've only had stitches once in my life. The idea that I would have blood gushing out of my hand on a Wednesday yeah. afternoon and Sunday play an impeccable fourth quarter of football, you, you look back at it and it's like, there's a reason everybody talked about this story. Like, it was a real thing. Think about baseball. You could not have pitched if you were a pitcher when Tom Brady. Uh -huh. What if James Harden had a hand he couldn't shoot? The quarterback of the Patriots literally had an injury which would have prohibited most other sports stars from participating in a game, and I he was great. two stitches in my mouth when I had my wisdom teeth taken out, and I was eating mashed potatoes for two weeks. <laughs> you know, I, I just wouldn't even consider doing something that extraneous. Uh, so Tom Brady is also talking about his jersey and what will happen after the Super Bowl, because remember last year there was Jersey Gate where it went missing and then some kid found it and they tracked it to Mexico and he finally got it back. So Tom was asked how he's going to handle his jersey this year when the game's over. I'm taking it with me, man. If, if we win, then 
If we lose, I'm throwing in the garbage. If I win, I'm taking it. So hopefully we can win. So if they win, that's great. But if they lose, every kid's going to be looking in all the garbage cans to I, try and find that jersey. One year ago, almost to the week, it was to the week, this was the big... Remember this? Yes, I do. Tom Brady's jersey was stolen, and they and Jay Glazer came on from that gentleman right there. Well, I shouldn't call him a gentleman. That thief yeah, right there uh, who eventually lost his job. Yeah, last year, this was a massive story. That was so great. And getting the footage with the guy's face. It is, it is amazing be, just because of the... I can remember like 15, 20 years ago when they were talking about, do we want all these cameras in society? It's Big Brother. There'll be no more privacy. How many like crimes, mm -hmm. attacks have yeah. been solved because a light post? I mean, look at that shot, Christine. I was in that hallway. I had no idea there were multiple cameras in that hallway. There are cameras I, everywhere. I, I was in that I was in that hallway ten times on Super Bowl Sunday last year. I mean, have you watched Forty Eight Hours? That's oh, how they solve all the crimes yep. from like a grocery store camera across the street. Yeah, you're always on camera. Um, and finally, because I wasn't here yesterday, I really wanted to talk about this, but there's yeah. some new news to it as well. The Clippers traded Blake Griffin to Detroit, and now there are rumors that DeAndre Jordan is next to be mm, traded. So that. Doc was asked about that today, and here's his answer. Just trying to win now uh, with what we have uh, and just play for us every night. But that's hard. Uh, that's, that's the tough part. You know, we make this trade, and then everyone thinks we're – just trading everybody away, that's not true, you know, but that's that's what's out there. Uh, sometimes you can't control the narrative. You just control your job, and that's what I have to do. Well, come on. Well, first of all, um, what an awful deal for Blake Griffin to go to Detroit. I don't think, first of all, I mean, not that this is everything, but I don't think his current girlfriend's going to go visit him in Detroit. Uh -huh. He also has at least four more years left on his deal, so he's stuck there unless Detroit is going to trade him, which I don't really see that happening. Also, the Clippers just got Avery Bradley. And remember, Avery played for Doc before in yeah. Boston, and I don't think they have the best relationship. Um, this is also rebuilding. And remember why Doc left Boston? Because he didn't want to rebuild, which tells me that this isn't really his decision. This is maybe Jerry West's decision or Steve Ballmer's decision to start rebuilding, which also tells me that DeAndre might actually be next and that Doc uh, isn't really in the loop. On Listen, that. You, you can't... <laughs> You can't say you're not trading all your pieces when you called Blake Griffin a clipper for life like a month and two months ago, mm -hmm. and now you're getting rid of him. And it's clearly a priority to clear space. Like, everybody gets this, right? Like, no, nobody's fooled by this. I've got enough sources, even with the Clippers, to know they're clearing space, man. It's the LeBron sweepstakes. Do you want to be number two to the Lakers? This is why the Angels go after big names. This is why UCLA football hired Chip Kelly. You want to do a paradigm shifter. You're never going to surpass the Lakers, who now have these young pieces and are going all in on Paul George and LeBron if you're going and getting Avery Bradley. This is about clearing space and making a run at LeBron, and everybody in the league knows it. Which, by the way, even if they don't get LeBron, this is a move I think they should have done years ago, and I was saying it yes. years ago because clearly the big three that they had in Chris Paul, Blake, and DeAndre, it wasn't working, and they were only changing pieces around them. So this needed to happen a while ago to just blow it up because they weren't going to win a championship or get past the second round. Totally agree. Uh, Christine uh, uh, battling influenza with the news. Influenza. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Lie News. Uh, good stuff. Doug Gottlieb is in Minnesota via the Coward Global Satellite Network at the Super Bowl. All right, Kirk Cousins, Alex Smith. I, you know, I was saying to start the show today, Kirk Cousins, Doug, he wants to prove everybody wrong. And he wants to prove everybody, I, I am a franchise quarterback. And so he and his agent, in a market that's got like seven desperate teams that need a quarterback, they'll probably get $30 million. But the problem will be, in his insistence to prove everybody wrong, he wants the most money, and it's going to limit the team that gets him. And, I mean, I, Alex Smith at $23 million, to me, is better than Kirk Cousins at 30 is he not? Um, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, look, I think there's some dollars and cents. He also lost a... A corner, a cornerback who can cover in the slot and cover out wide as well. So, look, I actually think this is a fair trade. The crazy thing is, Kirk Cousins, you know, passes Alex Smith in the hallway, and they're like, "Wait, you look exactly like me, right? <laughs> you're, you're good to a point." And and we've seen this before in San Francisco, right? A quarterback-friendly coach uh, lets Alex Smith play and rise his game to a higher level than yep. previously, but then he's replaced by a by a draft pick, by a younger quarterback. Same thing happens in Kansas City. 
So, like, history repeating itself, which feels like that's what's going to happen in D.C. He'll probably get, you know, stabilize D.C., give them cost certainty throughout his career, and at some point they'll draft a quarterback, and at some point they'll move on from Alex Smith for a younger, better version that throws the ball more downfield. So I actually think this is a fair trade, but I, I think what happened in D.C., we used to see it at our previous place of employment, right, where um, I think the Redskins wanted credit were believing in Kirk Cousins before anybody else believed in Kirk Cousins. Right. And they wanted him to take a hometown discount because right. of it. And Kirk Cousins is like, look, on the market, I'm worth more than this. I should – every quarterback who signs, signs for the highest dollar, and therein lies the rub. It's frankly, I think, the reason that I left, the reason that you left, the reason that other people have left is people think that because you discover somebody and help nurture their talent, they're supposed to somehow – bow down to you and take less than the, the market would uh, would other, otherwise bear. Um, you know, speaking of leaving, um, LeBron James, Kevin Love's now hurt for eight weeks. And I was telling the staff this morning, Doug, I said, you know, why did LeBron leave Miami? It was still a beautiful place. They still had Pat Riley. His buddy D. Wade was there. Mickey Harrison's a great, terrific owner. Um, no state tax, aqua water. A lot of the things remain. It's a glamorous free agent market. But that roster was getting old. Bosch was missing games. D. Wade was missing games. And I, and I felt like LeBron didn't want to be saddled having to play every minute, every night with an old team. Well, now Tristan Thompson's been out. And Derrick Rose has been hurt. And now Kevin Love is out. And Isaiah Thomas is hip. God, I, I read that story this morning, Doug, and I'm like, he's so out of Cleveland. I mean, they don't have the aqua water. It just feels like it's a team that's aged in front of him like Miami. And I don't think LeBron wants to be saddled with that again. Your take. No, I don't. I don't even think it, it necessarily has completely to do with age as much as pieces that don't fit together. We talked about this, and everybody just assumed, well, Isaiah Thomas averaged 29 points with the Celtics. You know, he'll be aver able to average 25 to 27. You know, with the Cavs, and he's just a smaller, different version of Kyrie Irving. He's a completely different player with a completely different style, and they have so many pieces that not only can't guard their own position, but can't guard others. Um, you look at trends around the league. Look what the Celtics did in the offseason. I tried to tell you when they made these moves, it wasn't just for getting young, skilled, athletic players like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, but their players and Gordon Hayward, but they can guard and play multiple positions. That's what basketball has become. So not only is Cleveland a little bit older, and they have these pieces that don't fit together, they have pieces that don't fit well for 2018 in the NBA. All of that combined with the fact that LeBron and the owner have never gotten along, never really. Basically, they were a divorced couple. They got remarried. Hell, you did this, Colin. You got remarried <laughs> yeah. to Kim. And then ultimately, you're like, you know what? There's a reason that it didn't work to begin yeah. with. Yeah. And now you're in, a, you're in a better place. Kim's in a better place. You know, I, I'm, let's go to the NFL. Uh, Tom versus Time. There's these documentaries that are out there. And um, I'm fascinated by them. I think it should be Tom versus all time because that's my all time favorite documentary. And you get to see his house and his kids and his life. And, you know, it's like it's like a legal uh, like 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 you have binoculars looking into Tom's life and he's letting you in. And I'm fascinated by it. And he's kind of a well, he's really obsessive. Um, you know, some people are saying there, there a lot of people are saying, you know, this is like he has no life and he. What is your takeaway as a division one athlete when you watch these documentaries and you see his not just devotion, Doug, his obsession with film study and football. Well, I, I think he's trying to give a snapshot of how he's become what he's become. I do think he believes, and there's a lot of people who agree with him, that we need to change the way we look at building your body, at maintaining your strength. Granted, it's position dependent, but the fact that he's not a big weightlifter and yet he's been able to maintain uh, his his overall, you know, the same kind of body mass and body type at 40 as he did at 30, maybe even in better shape at 40 at 30. Yeah. So there's a different way of looking at conditioning as well and conditioning the mind. Um, look, I, I think if you don't like Tom Brady, this isn't going to help you like Tom Brady. You're going to see it as propaganda. But if you're intrigued by how the hell is Tom Brady doing it at 40 years old and how does Tom Brady make it work as a dad and married to a supermodel, he's giving you his version of the truth. It's one of the really powerful things that superstar athletes can do is instead of having 60 minutes come in or have me and you come in and do a six or eight minute interview instead you simply have a documentary and have you know have ultimate editing power and portray the version of yourself that you most want portrayed i i'm like you i find it fascinating successful people especially people who are successful for longer in their chosen field than anyone previously 
I'm intrigued by it. But but I think it only helps, you know, feed the hunger for knowledge of how the Patriots do it to those who are intrigued by it. To the people who don't like Tom Brady, they're just going to use it as a reason to not like him even more. Uh, and finally, Doug Gottlieb at the Super Bowl. Uh, your dad was a basketball coach. Uh, your late father meant a lot to you. And um, I, I said when I was a kid growing up, two sports I loved. I loved football because it was tough, and my parents bought me a Cleveland Brown jersey with a helmet and pads, and you'd go out in the yard, and you'd hit guys, and you'd tackle. And you're a little boy. You're seven, eight years old. It was rough, and it was physical, and you get grass stains. And I love football for its kind of – I didn't know what the word was at the time, but it's masculinity and it's toughness. And I also loved the NBA because the NBA was cool. Dunks were cool. The players were cool. The out, the, the downtown Freddie Brown. They all had nicknames. They were cool. They dressed cool. Baseball, while I love Little League, um, was kind of statty. And I was never into the stats of it. Well, basketball has become more and more analytic and stat-driven, which I can tolerate some of it. But last night, James Harden gets a triple-double. For a coach, Mike D'Antoni, that's made every guard play it's an elevated game of, and jeremy lind was was a big deal under d'antoni steve nash ran the league in kobe duncan and shaq's prime so he has a triple double last night in 60 and the houston announcers were like this is the greatest thing we've ever seen and i'm like dude quit against san antonio at home lost by 39 an hour later was at a strip club james harden to me is a score i wasn't blown away by last night were you well look it was an incredible offensive performance it's the first ever triple double in which a guy scored 60 points in but these are stats on steroids. And the steroids are not just because of D'Antoni's system, but because the overall ball dominance, the fact that he makes every play. We saw in the college game, Trey Young last night, he only took, I don't know, 18 shots or so, but getting to the free throw line, dominating the basketball. I think he had 44 for Oklahoma. Yeah. And you try and compare it statistically with other errors, you cannot because they dominate the ball so much. Look, it's a great night for James Harden. He might well be the MVP. He probably should have been the MVP three years ago. But at the end of the day, no one thinks D'Antoni's going to make his team guard in the playoffs. James Harden might be his team's best player, but he doesn't play any defense. And all it is is confirmation bias that what we saw in game six was a player quitting on his team. If this is what he's capable, then last year against the San Antonio Spurs should be doubly embarrassing as opposed to how embarrassing it was at the time. By the way, what's the weather like in Minnesota? I know it's not balmy. How cold is it? Uh, it was like 25 uh, this morning, but it's going to be negative tonight and negative highs tomorrow so it's freezing and like look the good part about the twin cities is when you're in minneapolis you don't have to go outside except for an uber because they have all these skyways right right, right. The bad news is they got radio row here which is in bloomington uh bloomington which is right by the airport they had the first night out in st paul so you do have to get in a car hey like, look the stadium is the best stadium on earth the people are incredibly nice but i mean look We'd all rather be in L.A. when that stadium gets built or <laughs> Vegas when that stadium gets built or, or Miami. So I guess you build a stadium, they reward you, and those of us who are on the company's dime will somehow trudge through the cold. <laughs> all right. Doug Gottlieb. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate it, bud. Um, yeah, it's Mall of America. I've never been to Mall of America. It's supposed to be the biggest mall in America. That's why it's called Mall of America. I've never been to Mall of America. <laughs> Christine, have you? No, and I was really looking forward to going this year, so I'm kind of bummed out. Next year, Atlanta. year after that, we have it at Fox going to Miami. Coming up next, a number that's unbelievable. I'm not kidding you. It, it is fascinating and speaks to why we should admire this coach and this, this team. Exciting news, Simply Safe's a home security company. We've worked with them since they were a startup. Remember, it was started by a Harvard student. House got broken into, or his condo, or his apartment in Harvard. And he and his buddies were engineers, and they're like, we've got to create a security system that doesn't cost a fortune because we're college kids. Well, two million people now use Simply Safe. It's protecting their home, and they just released their brand new home security system, the all new Simply Safe. Rebuilt, redesigned, new safeguards, protects against power outages, uh, uh, Cut landlines, a downed Wi-Fi, and it says here bats and hammers. Apparently, bats are really a pain in the butt. Bats for security system. It's what's truly remarkable. They spent years building the system. Now they've added to it. There is no contract. It's fifteen dollars a month. It's twenty-four-seven protection. You want it, you can get it. SimplySafeColin.com. SimplySafe C O L I N dot com. Protect your family and your house today. SimplySafeColin.com. New Year's resolution, Sue?